on this cliffside at sunset, alone. Watching as a lazy ball of hydrogen descends into new days, as its array of soft oranges graze my eyes like the gentle caress of fresh sheets, and sprays of a thinned ocean coat my ankles in white salt. I reach my hand out, and I see her drifting from me as her colors seem brighter, but her magnificence the arbiter of her deceit as she sends a mocking word of success to those now in the dark and bathe someone new with her blinding, yet necessary, light. But she slips between my fingers as her flames sink seemingly just inches lower, and while she eludes me, I turn away, laying my back on volcanic rock. I lay further back in time. Rock from the heart of a mountain, forged in the hearth of a malleable beginning, Glowing even brighter than her head of muted orange hairs a million miles away, in the pressure of the literal weight of a million tons of rock. And yet the molten had the courage to change. Now that sands I may rest my back against are strong enough to keep whole under the pressure of millennia later. I reach my hand behind me, grasping further back in the timeline. The stone that was once a heart of molten is on a larger rock. That was an entire mountain range, then down to the core of the planet. A core that still rages in such a bitter fatherhood of our world's togetherness, as he longs to devour that rock that is himself, and dance for a billion years with she who now settles below our saline lake, her mocking rays now bathing another rock, but still the same him and he may cycle through a new stone, a new forgery, but still the very same us. I see my hair spread across the earth as they connect to the ground like roots made of me, and my roots bring me further back, back to a time with these very same rocks, more distant, a time when these stones were made of simple gases in a thin veil of nothing, as strange molten's were made inside a star. The same strange molten's where the roots of my being evolved from, so I too am information from a star. I lean even further back in the timeline. As the sea foams at my still dangling feet, my hair starts falling into the ether of the past as I dip my head into a thick membrane of nothing. I can see my thoughts floating in this dry water, this cold fire, this grounded sky. And while I try to look around this strange fetal womb of the universe, I see that I have no head to turn, and yet I think. No eyes to look, and yet I see. I see into this everything, at every time, everywhere. Membranes of the universe where the tendrils of physics cease to pull us apart. The birthplace of everything, where we never left. The womb of life in which we still dwell. And I hear my own voice, calling to a maiden a million miles away, and the very same voice responds with illustrious tenderness, and a million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, an infinite supposed others call with that very same voice, not to a maiden's blinding light, nor to the pressures of his core. And they, we, the voice, the body, the universe, we call ourselves to wake up, to see the sky as a crown upon our heads, and to see that crown as a member of the kingdom of us. That verse of us, the world, the universe. And the universe said, I love you. And the universe said, you are love. And the universe said, you are the midnight. And the universe said, you are the daylight. And as I raise my head back to this place bound by space and time, I see that I am this cliffside. I am this sunset. And I am, with all this universe that is what I am, alone.